the explorations, we found one city, huge city actually, it's bigger than Machu Picchu, that we called the lost city because it was quite lost. Yeah. It was four days' walk from Santa Marta in this forest, which is a beautiful forest. And we started to dig up that city, trying to understand how was the pattern of interaction with nature. The city is quite lost because it's located there, behind the mountain. So you have to just walk and be for four days, five days, just to arrive there. And uh, that's the city. Now we reconstruct the city. The idea was not to make a Disneyland there. So we just rebuilt the, the city. Took five years or more. Uh, but we didn't <coughs> throw away the trees. So actually, the city is semi lost because what you see from here is just this terrace, which is very big, where we uh, that we came in order to. Uh, allow the helicopter to land there. The only way to supply food and resources for the people that were built here was through helicopter. And it was an efficient way, so we came to tell this is a person just to, 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 to have a measure of the scale of the thing there. Now we are going to, just as out of curiosity, to land there. Oh see the city very fast. And we are, what we are going to do is to, we are going to land here, and we are going to go. This is the southern north axis of the city. We are going to go there. Just to show you the techniques that the Tairona were using to preserve the environment. And they didn't have any other choice then to do that, because otherwise it would be very difficult to survive there. So this is a map of the city, just for information. This is where we landed, and this is the distribution of all the terraces and constructions of the city. So it covers an area of about 150 hectares. Whatever that is in acres, it's like 300 acres, I think, something like that, Acre, acres. So now we landed, and we are going to notice certain things. There is a lot of labor involved in this building these huge walls. No? But the walls were made in a way that the water, it drains a lot, uh, can, uh, to allow the water to circulate and not to destroy the walls. And they put these stones like that over the walls to <coughs> prevent the water of, flooding, of, of, of coming on, on the wall. So the water droppets, what, making drops, you see? And these stairs we use it also as channels for the water. So we are going to see the, how they build this thing. It's a beautiful place, I thought. See? Then this was a key element for the settlement pattern. What they did actually was that they used the sierras in different levels. And they intercommunicate the cities by these roads so that cities from the coastline were specialized in the production of salt and proteins from fish. And cities a little higher were the cities that were producing uh, cotton and uh, a little higher cities that produce corn and manioc and uh, upper uh, some beans 
and maybe potatoes. And there was an exchange and distribu redistribution network by these roads all over the Sierra. So they were able to use the Sierra in a way that permit them to specialize by levels of altitude on different products very widely. And contrary to the Amazon, to nucleate the population in this city so that the rest of the forest could be maintained and use it. So this is wise ways of constructing cities. This, this, this stairs coming from the wall, that kind of thing. And some of the terraces. All of this was covered by and the average one meter of soil. There was a lot of work to disinter this, this thing. But there were big houses, see? These houses had 900 square feet. The house was <laughs> built over, over those circles and in wood. Just to show. See? And so the, in, in, in the, 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 the Sierra is very steep. So what they were doing was terracing that steepness to protect it from erosion. It was a lot of work, but it, very efficient. Using rocks from the region. And this is to show that when it drains, the rain, the water has to be managed. If not, it's, it will erode a lot. It, it's, it's very steep. And, and it very, so they make channels to conduct the water. That's one example of the channel. And that's another example of how the houses were built here. How the, the channels were made. See, that's upside down. But anyway, oh, okay. That's more or less a reconstruction of how the within the city look in one of the sectors. The, the, how the houses were built. Some archaeological excavations. Another, well, this is how it was in Paris. I mean, that's before the reconstruction. See, that's that, that's big, that big road, and I show you before. All right, the Sierra again. See, environment is even if it is so steep. It's quite well preserved. This is an area where another city is not still officially discovered. It's a beautiful city. This one. And that's another one. That one. And that's how some of the cities look when the forest is taken from. Now, a lot of that knowledge was lost as a result of the conquest. Always the conquest <coughs> has to justify itself, saying that the people that are conquered are ignorant, are barbarous. So this shows exactly that. See? This were the different civilizations of the country, high civilizations of the country, in the moment of the arrival of the conquistadores here. Here. Tayrona, Vicino, Muisca, etc., etc., all of those important cultures, the only one that had finished was Tenochtitlan. Well, the other ones were alive. And this is the situation in 1600, in 
at the, at the beginning of the century, 17th century, evaporated. <laughs> See? And with that evaporation, the evaporation of the knowledge and the cultural trends and a whole asset for humanity. This is the actual Indians. They are the descendants of the old Tyronas, of the old people that was living there. They don't have any more the resources, the human resources, nor the territory into the sea to be able to uh, reconstruct the culture. So actually what they are doing is overusing the environment. They don't have the possibility of using this multi-altitudinal uh, system that was used by the, by the Tyronas, and now they are overusing the small territory that they have and also causing erosion. These are the Kohis. People that still live very much as in the moment of the conquest, but because they, the, the, the territory has changed and the conditions of, uh, of access to the sea for proteins and those things and the possibility of, of using their knowledge of adaptation to the Sierra has been changed. Now they are in the same trend of creating erosion. And this is the actual settler pattern. Very inefficient. This guy lives uh, like three days walk from Santa Marta. He's using this thin tile for his roof, which he has to bring from Santa Marta at an incredible cost. Uh, it behaves not very well because it's very hot during the day. It's very cold during the night. Uh, there is very, very little light entering into the house. So cold and or at least very humid inside there, and very hot during the day. And he's starting this <coughs> magnificent civilized idea of, of uh, slashing and, 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 and using crops around his house. So this photograph was taken like 10 years ago, and I will not be surprised that today this guy have destroyed not only this, but he must be already having destroyed all this area here. And the recuperation of this, the reclaiming of those lands, is really very difficult. Now, this is because some of you people are architects. And I told you that I was going to show uh, this sort of invention that was uh, a success story of how to use the architecture of the Tayona, the archaeological architecture, for today's purposes. We had this problem in the national park there of a lot of pressure from industrial people to build a hotel. So we say, all right, we will build a small hotel, but we will use only Tayona technology for building the hotel, and exactly the same Tayrona pattern of distances between houses and everything. And we, this is the general plan of the thing, and we invent these houses, <coughs> and we're exactly at the Tayrona house with this wall here, and the green stone building house of our posts, and everything was tied with vines. Exactly as the Tyrona did. It was a very interesting experiment. And we learned a lot of the Tyrona. I would say it's a very interesting experience, experiment on uh, uh, technology uh, diffusion from the past to the present. This, this is how it looks. 
just like the Tyrona houses, see? The interesting thing of this type of hotel is that it doesn't need air condition because this is very fresh during the day. And this system of windows around that goes all the way around can be open in the morning when the, when the winds from the Sierra come down. And it's cold wind, comes from the high mountains. And in the afternoon, it's possible to close the back windows and open the front windows, this one. And then the wind from the sea will come in. So ventilation is excellent. The Tyronas were right. Uh, no need for air conditioning. Maintenance of the whole thing is quite cheap. And, um, and the cost of building that kind of hotel is like uh, 50 times less than building any other kind of build of, of, of construction, Hilton type, see? This is how it looks, one of the terraces from inside. And that's one of the rooms. I'm sat there. The photograph is a little bit dark, but here, can you see how it's put together with vines and how the windows and those things? More view. See? Just, this is just to show uh, how simple is the construction. It is just awesome. Very simple thing. No huge quantities of cement. So it is possible to do those things. And also it's very pretty. And very comfortable. <coughs> All right, so that's sort of the message. And as a synthesis of the message, is that in these problems of global environmental change, civilized people have to hear so-called uncivilized or third world people in every level. Not only in the academic and scientific milieu, but also we have to hear the Tyronas they have a lot to tell. So, I'm using too much time, so thank you very much. Yes, mm, uh, <coughs> well, they were the, the same thing as in the Andes. These uh, terraces, yeah, this, this, this terrace, there were terraces. And that's very effective also, how those terraces work. Because those terraces operate under the sea, under, under, under the, the principle of drop irrigation, which is very effective. And it's one of the things that has been recently discovered, drop irrigation for, for trees. And, and, and that's the big thing today is drop irrigation. Tyrone and the Incas and everybody was doing drop irrigation. Were there fields close to their houses? Pardon? Were the fields close to their houses or were they off the uh, No, off, off the, off the city. <laughs> Some yeah. distance away. Yeah. Right. Right. And so those roads were built in order to go to those places. Actually, we did some experiments with cultivation also. Because the chronicles are quite precise for the Sierra Nevada. So they, they say what kind of things were being planted and how they were planted. So we start a project there, <coughs> just following the same pattern. And it works very well. It's very productive. Is 
it's there. Of why 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 people left because of the conquest, right? Uh, what the Spanish did, did was exactly that: was to invade the territory and cut <coughs> the access of the Highland people to, to the sea, and that broke the system, the economical system, because protein, those things operate in terms of protein, and so no more fish proteins, no more salt. No more Tyrone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>